Lexi? Um, wouldn't it be negative six, four? Close. Melody, do you want to add to that? Would it be six, zero and negative four, zero? Right. So we have to remember that we have to switch the signs that we see. So the x-intercepts are six, zero and negative four, zero. Um, how do we go about finding the vertex from here? We learned how we can actually use x-intercepts to find some information about the vertex. How do we do this? I know that the vertex needs to be halfway in between both of the x-intercepts. So how do I find the center of the x-intercepts? What did we talk about? Yeah, like add them and divide it by two. Right. So we have an axis of symmetry formula that helps us. And we essentially do this by adding the x-intercepts together and dividing by two. It's almost like taking the average of them, right? So that we find the center. So what we'll end up with here is two over two, and that gives us x equals one. This is also the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if I have the x-coordinate of the vertex, I should be able to just put it into my equation here and find the corresponding y-coordinate. So we're just going to sub in x equals one and solve for the y that matches that x-coordinate. So negative five times five gives us negative 25. And then multiplying that by 0.5, we should get negative 12.5. So our vertex is 1, negative 12.5. Okay, so here are our solutions. We've got our x-intercepts and we've got our vertex point. Okay, so that's just kind of a recap of what we can find from factored form. We talked about this at the end of chapter four. And we're also going to review a couple little things from grade nine. So do you guys remember in grade nine, um, we learned about GCF. Does anyone remember what this stands for? What is the GCF? Greatest common factor. Okay, good. Um, guys, make sure you use the raise hand feature because I think there's a lot of people that are answering and talking over each other. Um, okay, greatest common factor. That is not how you spell greatest. Greatest common factor. Can anyone explain to me what that means? What does it mean for something to be the greatest common factor? the biggest number that two other numbers share that can be multiplied? I think it's been a while since I did this. Uh, yeah, you're sort of along the correct lines. Um, so the greatest common factor would be the biggest number that I can actually divide exactly into two or more terms. So let's just write that definition here. Okay, and when I say divided exactly, I essentially just mean that if I choose my greatest common factor, it should divide evenly so that I don't end up with a decimal um, when I divide that greatest common factor by any of my terms. So if I were looking at 6, 12, and 9, all of these things, they have a greatest common factor of 3 because 3 is the largest number that I can divide equally into each of those terms. Uh, 
Um, yeah, Lila, thanks for reminding me. Um, so it's break time in two minutes. So we will do our break um, in a couple minutes. Okay, so before we get into this today, I'm just gonna go over this little part. We'll have our break and then we can come back. Um, so here's our three forms of our quadratic equation that I introduced to you in part one of our lesson. We have vertex form, standard form, and, and factored form. So we've learned how to go from vertex form to standard form and factored form to standard form by foiling. Now we're going to kind of learn the opposite, which is called factoring. And factoring is essentially what Lila asked me earlier. She said, are we going to do the opposite of foiling? And the answer is yes. And that is the process of what we call factoring. So distribute. Uh, distribution or distributing brackets or foiling brackets expands them. So what it does is it's multiplying. It gets rid of brackets. Um, and factoring does the opposite. It puts them back into the brackets. So then I can go from standard form into factored form. Or I could, and we're also going to learn in chapter six how we can go from standard form into vertex form. But we're going to focus in uh, a little bit more on how we can get from standard form to factored form in chapter five. Um, so the idea is, is that foiling is multiplication. So we multiply out the brackets, whereas factoring is sort of like division. We put them back into the brackets. So in order to do this, we need to learn sort of like a first step of factoring, which is common factoring, um, which would be to divide out any common numbers or letters. So greatest common factor. Um, of all of our terms and just get that into sort of like a common factored form. Um, we're going to do common factoring, which is the first step of uh, getting into factoring. Um, and essentially what we're looking for is when we go to do common factoring, what can be divided evenly into every term in the equation. And uh, we're going to sort of like divide that out from each term, but it can't just simply disappear. So I'll show you an example to show you what we need to do for common factoring. So for instance, can somebody tell me out of 6x and 3, what is the biggest thing that can divide into both of these? Is it 3? Three? Three. It, it would be 3. That's right. So what we're going to do is because 3 is the greatest common factor, we will divide out 3 from each of these. But the three can't simply just disappear. I can't just change the equation all of a sudden. So what we do is we take that common factor and we actually put it out front and we write a set of brackets. So we're sort of like taking out the common thing and then writing what's left after we've taken that out from each term. So 6x divided by 3, we would have 2x left. And 3 divided by 3, well, anything divided by itself is 1. So the thought is, is that if I were to take this 3 and distribute it back in, I would get back 6x plus 3. So that's sort of how you can check your work. So 3 times 2x, that gives me 6x. And 3 times 1, that gives me 3 back. So I haven't changed the equation in any way. I've just sort of like reformatted it so that it's in a different format. Lila, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, so sorry, where did the three come from at the beginning of the equation? So the three is what we call the greatest common factor. It's the biggest thing that we can divide into both of those terms. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so for number two, um, for all of these, we sort of have to look at, like, the variable and the uh, coefficient part. So just as a reminder, coefficient is the number in front of your variable. So if we look at 8 and 7, or a negative 7, I should say, these don't really have anything that divides evenly into both of them other than 1. We don't usually take out common factors of 1 because the equation would just remain the same. But these both do share something common as far as the variable. What is common in both of these terms? Allie? Or Lexi, sorry. They both have an x. They both have an x. So inside of the first term, there are two x's. And inside of the second term, there's a single x. So the max that I could take out from this is 1x. So I'm going to take out an x from each term. That's going to be like our greatest common factor. We will put it out front of a set of brackets and write what's left after we remove that from each term. 
So 8x squared divided by x, if I take out one of the x's, I'm left with 8x. And then 7x, I take out the x that's there, so I'm just left with negative 7. Okay, so again, you do a little check. If you distribute this in, do you get back what you started with? That's the check. Okay, let's try a few more. Okay, so first things first, in number three, we're going to look at the coefficient part. What's the greatest common factor between 25 and 15? Clayton? Five. Five, perfect. So I'm going to put that out front. And then when you look at variable parts, the greatest amount of a variable that you can take out is the lowest variable or the lowest exponent that you see anywhere in your equation on that variable. So in the first part here, I have six Ks. And in the second part, I have four Ks. So I can actually take out a maximum of four Ks from each of these. So that's going to be my common greatest common factor is 5k to the 4. So I'll actually take 5k to the 4 and divide that out from each term. Remember guys, when I work with variables, it's not exactly the same as like dividing, right? So if we have 6k's here, I actually have k times k times k times k times k times k. And I can actually take out four of those k's. How many would remain after that? Clayton? Two. Yeah, so when I take out four of those six Ks, I'm left with two of them. And then I can do 25 divided by five, and that will give us five. Okay, and then similarly, we'll do 15 divided by five, which is three. And if I have four Ks and I take out four of them, I don't have any Ks left. So I'm just going to end that one at three. So that will be our solution. So when you're dealing with variables, you're going to look and see if every term has that variable. And the maximum that you can take out is the lowest exponent on that variable. So let's take a look at number four. We'll use that idea. So firstly, let's look at coefficients. 21, negative 28 and positive 7. What is the greatest common factor that I can take out from these coefficients? Seven. Seven. Okay. So seven is part of it. So I'll divide each of those by seven. And then I also need to figure out the greatest common variables that I can take out here. So out of the C's, I'm looking for the C with the lowest exponent. That's all, that's the maximum of what I can take out from everything. One. So, yeah, so it would be one. So if I look through, I'm noticing that this has four, this has two, but this one only has one in the end. And that's the maximum that I can take out from each of them. Of course, I can't take out more than one from this last term because it only has one. So we're going to take out a C from every term. And then we'll look at the Ds. And again, we're looking for the D with the lowest variable to decide how many we can take out from each term. Melody? D cubed or like D to the power of three. Yes, so that's the lowest exponent. So I can take out a D cubed from each term. And always remember guys, we wanna write the greatest common factor out front, and then we will open up a set of bracket to, brackets to write what's left. So as we go along here, we'll just take it piece by piece. 21 divided by 7 is 3. I have four C's and I'm taking out one. I'll be left with three. And then I have three D's and I'm taking out three of them. I don't have any D's left. I took out all of them in that term. Okay, let's move to the next one. 
negative 28 divided by 7. That's negative 4. I have two Cs, and I'm taking out one of the two Cs. So I'll be left with one. And then I have five Ds, and I'm taking out three of them. I'm left with two. And if we look at this last term here, I have 7CD cubed divided by 7CD cubed. What's anything divided by itself? One. One. So I should have plus one at the end here. So that should be our final common factored um, version of this. So one little check that you can also do other than just distributing this back in and checking to see if you get this back, what you should also be looking for is in your remaining terms, are there any common factors left? So I'm seeing that the first term and the second term, they have C's in them, but the last term doesn't have that. Um, and out of three, negative four and one, none of these have any anything that they can be divided by evenly. Um, so it looks like we found all of the common factors. Now, if I missed a D, for instance, or something like that, you would see maybe that there's a D here, a D here, and a D here. Um, so we want to just make sure that we go through and check in the brackets for any remaining common factors that maybe we missed in our first step. Okay, why don't you guys try number five, see if you can uh, factor this. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to make you guys do that one. Are there any common factors um, out of five and seven? I don't think there are. We have like only one dividing in, into each of these. Also, you'll notice that there's no common variables. So the first term has an X and a Y, second term has a W and a Z. So this has no common factors at all. So we would just write cannot be common factored. And that's possible. It's possible that you could have two or more terms that don't share a common factor and there's really not much that we can do with that, right? We can't common factor it if it doesn't have anything common. So that's okay for that to happen. Okay, so as we move to these other guys, um, I want you to think about this as a full term and this as a full term. What's common in each of these pieces here? What's the same? Y. Uh, there's something bigger. It's a Y. Lila? Like the brackets like Y plus one. Right. So they, yes, they each have a Y, but they both have a bracket of Y plus one. So this follows the same sort of process. I can take out the common factor and the common factor is Y plus one. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to open up a set of brackets and actually divide out that common factor from each term. Well, when I divide this out, these will be gone, and all that will be left is 3x, because I took the y plus 1 out of that term, so I'll be left with 3x. These will also be removed, so in the second term, I'll just be left with plus 7z. So we're just taking out that common part and writing what's left after we've taken that out from both of the terms in a set of brackets there. So can somebody tell me how I can apply the same concept to this? What would this be once I've common factored it? Nicole, go ahead. Would it be x minus 3? And then would it be um, 2x 
big bracket 2x um, minus 5. Yeah, okay. that's great. Yeah, perfect. So we have a common x minus 3. We are going to take that out or divide it out in other words, and we will be left in the second bracket with 2x minus 5. So really what we're doing here is we're dividing each term by x minus 3. These will then be gone. We write it out front here, of course, so it's not disappearing. And then we're left with 2x minus 5. Perfect. Any questions before we move forward? Okay, the last type of factoring that I'm going to show you today is called factoring by grouping. And factoring by grouping, you're going to see four terms. So terms are separated by additions and subtractions. So you're gonna see one, two, three, four terms. And we're going to sort of do like a groups type thing where we separate these two, like two of the four terms into their own groups. So let's say for instance, this one, is the first group and this one is the second group. We'll write some steps over here. So we're going to group our terms into two equal groups and when I say equal groups I mean like they have the same amount of terms. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to common factor each group. So I am literally just going to ignore this group for a second. And I'm going to pretend that I'm just common factoring just this. So out of AX plus AY, what is common here? The A. The A. So I'm going to common factor that out. And when I divide that out from each term, I am going to be left with, so we'll divide A and divide A. I'll be left with X plus Y. Okay, and then similarly, we're going to common factor the second group as well. So if I look at just this half now, 2X plus 2Y, of course, they share a common two. Um, I'm just going to write a little note here in the second group you're going to take out the common factor with its sign. So if it's negative or if it's positive, you're gonna take that out with its sign. So in this case, I would be taking out a positive two. So I'm gonna put positive two here. And when I common factor that out, it means I have to divide it out from each term and write what's left inside the bracket. So I will get X plus Y. And if you've factored, if you, if you actually can factor by grouping, What's going to end up happening is you'll end up with two brackets that are actually equal. And this is essentially in the format of what we just did up here, right? We have two numbers that are out front and then two common brackets. So you are going to common factor the common bracket. and write what's left in the second bracket. So we are going to take out a common factor of X plus Y, and we open up a set of brackets always when we common factor, and then we will write what's left. So what's going to happen here is these will be gone, and I will be left with A plus two in the second bracket.
This is factoring by grouping. Okay, this is gonna take maybe a little bit of practice to sort of get the steps down. Um, so we'll try another one here. Okay, just follow the steps that I've written for you. Okay, so we're gonna group our terms into two equal groups. I'm gonna choose this as group one. This will be group two. You don't have to write like, I'm just kind of showing you what each of the groups are, but if you know like, okay, I'm gonna make the first two group one and I'll make the, first, the last two group two, that's fine. And then we will common factor from each group. So I'm gonna ignore this for a second. And I just want a common factor 9x squared and 15x. So can somebody tell me what is the greatest common factor between these two terms? X. Uh, X is one of them. Mackenzie, what else? Sorry, what was that? Three. X and three. So 3x three is the common factor. And we'll divide that out from each term and write what's left in a bracket. So nine divided by three is three. And x squared divided by x, oops. If I have two x's and I take out one of them, I'm gonna be left with one x. And then 15 divided by three will be positive five. And x divided by x, that means the x's are now gone from that expression. So I've taken the x out fully. So that's our first one. And second group here, 3x and 5. Now, typically, we would not take out a 1 as a common factor. But when we're factoring by grouping, this is the one little exception. And that is that if you don't have a common factor, for instance, 3x and 5 don't share anything in common that we can divide out of each of these, you're actually going to take out a 1 and we're going to take it out with its sign. So I'm going to take out a positive 1 here. I'm going to be left with the same thing because when I divide something by 1, I'm really just left with 3x plus 5. Okay, so this is the one exception to the rule, and that is only when we're factoring by grouping do we take out a positive one, um, like we're doing here. Otherwise, we would never common factor a one. Clayton, did you have a question, or is that just your hand from earlier? Yeah, I had a question. Oh, okay, sorry, go ahead. Could you like cha change, like swap two of the numbers in the polynomial to like switch the groups? Um, you could. I would say like for formats like this, you could switch 15x and 3x. Like if you're noticing that 9x squared and 3x share more in common and then 15x and 5 share more in common, you could swap those two. Um, same with this. Like you, if you wanted to put the y's together, you could swap two terms. Um, I always usually look to just see, like, keep the terms that have stuff in common sort of, like, together. But, yeah, you can definitely rearrange if needed. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we're back in that format where we have this common bracket. We're going to common factor the common bracket. And that means that I'm actually taking each term here and dividing out 3x plus 5. So in our second bracket, we're going to be left with 3x plus 1. So that should be our final. Any ideas how we can check to make sure that this equals this? What did we say was the opposite of factoring? Distribution. Yeah, so if I FOIL it, I should get this back in my first step of FOILing before I combine 15x and 3x. So you can actually FOIL to check these guys. 